Hey guys, what's going on? The whole premise here is to show you how easy it is to do this. Don't look at this project and think that, oh, I can't do it. Because if you're watching me, you're likely a pretty high skill DIYer. A lot of you guys are in the trades. You can absolutely do this with a standard router from Lowe's and a few bits that I just found. I just eyed them. I know some of you guys out there are like seriously skilled and you actually know what you're looking at. Um, I'm just gonna show you how I did it and explain my whole process. There will be chapters for this. So if you look down and, and you expand the description area, there will be hyperlinks. Also in the comment section, I will pin the hyperlinks and you should be able to scroll through the video and see what chapter you're in with YouTube's new features. If you wanna see where we're getting the phone from, it's sourced from our site, tvnation.net. It's called Orthodeck. And we're using the DIY self-routing sheets is what we call it. They also have pre-routed sheets if you want them. And there's also HydroTurf and CDEC and anything else you like there for your flooring, but we are specifically showing you Orthodeck and we'll explain it to you why. Check this video out and also check out our complete series on this boat if you haven't checked out how we got this far. It's up here in the iCard and also in the description below as well. Thank you guys. All right, let's begin. If you're following this series, you saw that last episode, we put together all the hatches. This is the Gen 7 core and we also mixed in some Gen X core also to make the entire thing work along Kusa board side panels. We really did, it took a long time to do this DIY, but the fact is you can do anything you want, essentially make any kind of hatch you want without a welder. So out of your small garage, just like me, you can put a whole boat deck together. And so that's where we were at. Now we're prepping it and we are going to actually paint the exterior. Some stuff I learned down in Georgia from those boys down there working with Nate is that they paint all their hatches. They actually powder coat all the dry hatches. So we can't actually do that here, but we do have some truck bed liner that's a little bit more durable than the average spray paint along with some regular spray paint. So we're gonna do a few light coats of self etching primer. And that's what's recommended from the audience saying to not go too thick on it. Just use light coats and that'll do it. And then I had this truck bed liner sitting in my little locker of hazmat for like ever and finally get to use it, which means I can go and buy more useless spray paint to sit in my garage for the next five years. But anyways, this came out pretty sweet. And now we're putting on the door edge guard. Guard, what that does is really drown out the sound and the clanging of the aluminum hatch. It's almost non-existent. It's one thing to get to the fish in a boat this skinny. It's another thing to keep the element of surprise through stealth. So we will do whatever it takes to make sure we have complete stealth. Many of you know that this is not my first attempt to try and turf a boat deck and self-route DIY them. In fact, that's kind of been my major MO. I did a first trial run on my boat and it came out pretty good considering, you know, we didn't even know if it could be done. And then I had better success there on the 14 foot Alumacraft, but I was a little afraid to really go all out like I'm about to try right now. We start by laying the sheet flat on the ground. I like to lay it face down with the adhesive backing up. That way I can trace a nice clean line with a marker where I need to make it. I always give more of an, a cut. So I try to do like one inch over at least. That way, if for whatever reason, the turf sways or it kind of, you know, just strays off the line, you'll at least have an inch gap to put it on. Because when the adhesive touches the aluminum, I swear it does not want to come off. You will likely stretch or ruin the turf trying to do it. A lot of times the adhesive just straight separates and stays on and it's a big giant mess. That's the only risk where when using this stuff. So we're gonna show you a trick on how to avoid all of that and just lay it down straight with no problems. We are going to be using alcohol. Rubbing alcohol, that's all you need. You can use denatured alcohol, but nothing too strong. Just enough to get the initial contaminants off. And then, uh, you know, but not strong enough to take off the paint. Obviously, we don't want that. Whoa, what the hell's on here? You can also tell there are pretty gross contaminants on here. Something is on here. Yeah, it's doing a good job. Now, we lay this turf on, and I know this is touching a dirty surface, but there really is no better way. So we make sure that it's straight, that we like the way it's looking. I'm gonna pull it this way even. And while it's there, you kind of want to clamp it in place so it won't shift. That's the important thing. The better option is to have somebody just hold it in place while you apply the initial layer. But since we don't have that, we are, we just have ourselves. 
and we do not want this to shift I even shift it there a little bit here we want we want the overhang because we're going to end up cutting this we are we do want the overhang a little bit on there so that won't move that's right here we're just going to cut a strip here i call this the safety strip meaning this adhesive on the back of this is some supreme adhesive it is real stuff and then once it's on there it is on there it is not coming off so you got to get it nice and you line it up once so we have it lined up pretty much perfectly even with the end here which is what we wanted and that is fantastic our safety clamps and we can just slowly work our way down the line and it's just going to naturally fall the way we have it set there we go that stuff is not going to come off it will peel paint off of the aluminum and it'll probably separate the the adhesive is so strong it'll separate from the foam before you ever pull this strip off a little tip from nate is to use these small ones just something between less blade being in the turf allowing less drag and i don't know what what it is or i can explain to you the science behind it i just know that it works We got a few options. We got this beast. We do a nice little center curve in. But we kind of don't have that going on on the edge, so it might look stupid. We got this beast. We got these, which are the same thing. One of these will give us a thicker line. I'm kind of favoring the thicker line. I think it'll look nicer. So this has got that same bit on it. I didn't get a chance to show you what bit that was, but it essentially was like this kind of counter concave, I don't know, flanged out bit, kind of like a triangle, but not. And that I just put it to the the only depth. I mean, you can see the depth of the brown right there. And right now, you see that I went a little down, a little too deep. So you want to only just take enough on any bit to just get through the first layer of foam. If you dig into the black layer or the second layer of anything, not only will you risk a bigger chance of making your line go off groove, but it just looks kind of crappy. It's harder on the blade, etc. And you definitely don't want to do that with the side bit that we just routed the whole edge on because then you can kind of ground away the aluminum, which is terrible. Right now we are just using this meter stick to mark about about an inch and a half border. And then we're gonna use those bits we showed you earlier to do the border. So this router has guidelines. So we just put the line right there and then right there. And obviously we just run, I'm running a piece of angle. I was gonna try and run tubing earlier but it just wasn't gripping on these Gen 7 hatches the way it would grip on a Gen X. So I switched to a piece of angle. And so we're gonna butt this piece right here. I'm using the round edge because I used to put the square edge above this and then somewhere down the line, it would bind and it would move. Just the lip would be like straight and it would curve like that and then the line would go crooked. But if, but if you're on the round edge, that can't happen. You can actually, it can twist, it can turn. You do what you have to do and it'll still go straight all the way down. We go all the way down to the end, turn around and repeat. So you're gonna see the plunge depth right here. So there's probably smarter ways to find the depth and add it there and then find the these measurements somewhere right here. I don't exactly even know how to tell, I just have been doing it by feel. 
I know I don't do things the traditional way like an actual skilled craftsman of his trade would do, but I hope you can uh, follow what I'm doing and then apply your professional skills uh, to make this process even better. And I and everybody else will also appreciate that. Helpful tips on this, go slow, follow the guideline and blow, like blow all the grit that comes out of that turf because it's gonna get in front of your router and it's gonna jam it up and it's gonna make your line bend. Ask me how I know. Wait, never mind. don't ask me. Just blow at it. I'm blowing at it right now. You can't tell. And then before you go all the way back, because you have to go all the way back, you sweep all that stuff off. You have to go back and forth to get the edge on both sides so it comes out clean. Whew, that looks good. Look at that. Let's just do the TV Nation first. I oh, don't know, the boat's a lot. I really do like the boat. John from JDS Outdoors, part of our tin can crew, did all these when we went down to Illinois for that four day build. And uh, I finally found a pretty good use for it other than it hanging in my office looking pretty. I'm using it for a stencil. It's not quite perfect, but it's pretty close. So when I go to route this, I'm just gonna do it freehand. No jig, no nothing. I mean, it's, it's not like wood where, you know, the slightest little thing can jar off your blade and your whole, your whole project can be ruined. This stuff is pretty forgiving as long as you go slow. And I will say this Dewalt XR router, I don't, this is the first router I ever owned besides like a Chicago electric router from Harbor Freight, which was terrible. So, I mean, I love this thing. It's very easy to move with one hand. You gotta control it with your bottom hand. You can see right in the glass. You got some goggles to deflect all the, all the crap flying at your face. I mean, you can see right where it's cutting. It's pretty good. It's a little tedious to go back around your line in the letter after you've already made the line, but it's pretty essential in making it look clean. In fact, the smaller bit didn't show away at it as good as the bigger bit did, so I will have to go in and show you this other trick that we have done before. When I traced it with John's very awesome plasma cutted, whatever like thing, I could tell that it was gonna be a little goofy, like not not the exact verbatim template. And you know I'm okay with that. And I was, and last time I cut this out, I cut out the whole thing and darkened, I like darkened the whole thing and that was pretty cool. But I don't know how well that's gonna like last for the deck. You know what I'm saying, like super deep in. So I think using just thin lines will be all right. Now obviously that smaller bit, even when I went back and through it, did all right, it didn't route it this clean. Like this is super supremely clean routed. Like you can't even tell it was used by a standard, but this you can definitely tell. Now, I don't like using this technique, especially on the high quality foam, but it does work to burn off the edges, which you have to be very precise. And you can't run it on here for very long because it does show. You have to be a little bit more careful. Some of this higher quality foam doesn't like to be burned on the edge. So you gotta like be real, The end kind of got away from me. I kind of chewed away at the underside and you can see that, which is okay because I kind of left it goofy style. So it just kind of adds to it, but definitely kind of screwed the end up. Right at the end, I was just all cocky. I got my rhythm back. I remember what I, how I used to do it, that it wasn't that hard. And then it, so constant caution. Now I have done more intricate jobs than this. And that was for the tracker, but I'm fine with these. Man, it looks good. That <laughs> looks fucking great. I can't wait to do the other side. I want to do like one hatch or maybe one or two at a day. Uh, there really was quite a bit of work. Now, a lot of it was apprehension. I haven't done it in over a year. It took me a little bit of time to get back into the groove. But, fuck, that looks dope, man. So I made the lids last video. This video, we are gonna have to put under supports and specialties under some of them. Like for this one, we need a pedestal mount. For this boat is only 32 inches at the bottom, it's going to roll. It is going to do it. So one of the advantages that we do have 
over yaks is that we could put a butt seat right in our hatches and that's pretty good. I had a butt seat last time and the need for outriggers wasn't really there. Um, not, not near as necessary. But if I don't have a butt seat here, I will almost 100% fall out of this boat. My balance is not the best and I plan on keeping this boat for a while. It's probably going to go tour with me in, my, in a toy hall or somewhere when I eventually go to tour the country if that comes into fruition. We'll see. But right now, here it is. And then here's the front hatch with a Gen X uh, frame. And we found that sticking just a few pieces of tubing in the middle does really good. And if you really want it ultra stiff, one of my patrons figured out that all you have to do is put another piece of sheet middle right on top of the tubing. So you have like a double, like you pretty much have a fully boxed under support. And that makes the hatch extremely rigid and inflexible especially in these gen 7 hatches where i did not expect the fully boxed under support here to make it as stiff as it did where if i'd have known it was going to be this stiff and strong by itself once we added this i would have made the entire boat gen 7 instead of most of it 75 25 split between gen 7 and gen x because these tubes and the 1 16th inch top make it super inflexible it's like one of the strongest hatches i have it's also one of the biggest hatches i have inside the boat and we cut a little spot there for the cantilever latch and we also installed the spots for the struts and all of that will be going on as soon as we turf the rest of this stuff we're turfing the aluminum lids that we painted and later on we will be turfing the kusa board hatches as well we glass this and then we sanded it kind of made sure it was all flat and even and a little bit of an abrasive top so that the adhesive from the ortho deck would just stick right on it and it does so quite beautifully. Just to cut the extra fluff off. And we did paint the insides black so they would match whenever we opened up the hatches. But each piece that we get done and ready to prep for routering, it gets increasingly more exciting. So here it is, just what the edge is routed. So the edge routing is like the simplest thing ever. So if you want to, in some ways it might even be simpler than the larger line turf, or even the line, the, the thin line turf, like the camo turf. Because as long as you're running all the foam the same direction, meaning, you know, you make sure it's running the, way, the same way. Because if you look at this piece, Right now, if you look at that piece, it's running similar. If I flip it, it's actually a different direction. It's just the way the light hits the grain, the way it's cut. So as long as you as you make sure it's all running the same way, which all this right now does, it is actually really easy.
this is your time. If you're watching this channel, it is likely because you are smart and highly skilled and ready to take this on. You can absolutely do this. And the most exciting part of it will it be when it's you doing this, not me. The leader of a movement is only the leader for a moment until the movement takes place. Become part of the movement. Become part of the empowerment that is the Tiny Boat Nation. And after you do it, send me all kinds of pictures of your jobs because I want to post them all over Instagram where they belong. Tie lines, guys. I'll see you out there.